Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna tackle the most requested video on my channel. In particular, I have requests for The Ordinary as well as Dr. Barbara Stern. I decided to actually include them both in the same video and do a full-on comparison. This one is 259 euros and for the same size of product, The Ordinary is less than six and a half euros. If you're new around here, my name is Kat. I am a scientist. I have studied science for over eight years and worked in STEM for over eight years. I'm also very passionate about skincare. But before I get into that, I want to actually discuss what exactly hyaluronic acid is because it is one of the least understood skincare ingredients in the market today. Well, there are actually actually right and wrong ways to use this product and if you use it in the wrong way it can harm your skin and be an issue. So what is hyaluronic acid? It is a non-sulfated glycosaminoglycan. It's a naturally occurring product that you find in your body and in the environment. The one that you apply topically to your skin is used as a humectant which behaves as a moisturizer and hydrates your skin. When it comes to skincare the most key feature of a hyaluronic acid is its molecular weight. If the molecular weight is too large, it's not bioavailable and your skin cannot absorb it properly and it doesn't really do anything. It just sits on the surface of your skin. Most serums, including both of the ones I'm going to review today, actually have a soup of hyaluronates and there are different molecular weights, which means that they absorb to different layers of your skin to hydrate and moisturize you from different layers of your skin. Who are they for? So hyaluronic acid is sort of touted as a great for everyone all the time of all ages and that isn't really true. There are some skin types that are going to respond really well to hyaluronic acids and other ones that may not respond as favorably. People with oily skin can suffer from dehydration and when your skin gets dehydrated it panics and it produces more sebum, the natural oil in your skin, and it actually can cause breakouts and your skin to become more oily because it's actually too dry. I'm actually going to dedicate an entire video just to that so if that sounds really valuable or interesting to you please do subscribe and and hit the bell so you can be notified when I drop that. But what you do need to know is that humectants work by absorbing water into the skin, so they are really good hydrators for people that have oil in their skin. If you have mature or dry skin, they can be good and they can actually leach moisture from your own skin depending on how and where you use them. How to properly use a humectant such as a hyaluronic acid is to use them as early as possible in your skincare routine. Using them directly after cleansing is definitely the best because it means your skin is super receptive to receive them. It also means that they will absorb quickly and they will actually lock in all that moisture after cleansing. Do not use them after thicker or heavier products because those have larger molecules and they will actually block the little holes and then they can't absorb into your skin. While that won't harm your skin, it will be really ineffective. The serums won't do anything at all. So there's no point in applying them. And when you're paying hundreds of euros for 30 mil, you definitely want it to work. So make sure that you're using them properly. So how do you use them improperly? If you live in a very humid climate, it's perfect no matter your skin type. But if you have a drier skin, watch out if you're in a dry climate. What you're going to want to do is use it directly after a shower when the air is full of moisture because it will just absorb all of that into your skin and then it will work well and you will be very hydrated. No matter your skin type, no matter your age, you should not use a hyaluronic acid on a plane. I actually see a lot of people pack hyaluronic serums or mists that have a lot of hyaluronates in them on a plane. Much like licking your lips, it will actually just leach water from your skin and you will leave the flight even more dehydrated than if you hadn't used the serum. Now that we've identified what hyaluronic acid is, who it's for, how to use it, I want to talk about these two products. The first thing I want to do is break down the ingredients list and do a side-by-side -side comparison. The ordinary actually has two hyaluronic serums. The one that I'm going to compare today is their OG serum. It is the Hyaluronic Acid 2% and B5. I'm just going to come right out and say I didn't really love this product and a lot of people with my skin type also didn't love this product. Brand has listened and actually come up with an alternative serum that's more suitable for dry skin types like me, but I don't have that product to compare today. I'm just going to compare to the original Hyaluronic Acid serum instead. So the first thing that I notice when I break down these products is 
is that the ingredients lists are actually more different than I expected them to be. The Ordinary one actually has quite a few more ingredients in it than the Dr. Barbara Sturm one. It does have a very high concentration of hyaluronic acid. Kind of interestingly, it actually has more than the Dr. Barbara Sturm, considering that is the key ingredient according to the name of the product it was a bit surprising that that's not the case for the Dr. Barbara Sturm but let's talk about the other ingredients in the ordinary first so it has a lot of hyaluronic acids it also has other humectants such as glycols and glycerins in it these are fantastic they work much in the same way they are very moisturizing and hydrating to your skin there were a few things in it that I didn't like including a citric acid now there's two reasons why I do not like seeing a citric acid in this product firstly it can be an irritant to people so including a product that isn't really relevant to the serum didn't make sense when it can agitate people's skin so I don't like seeing it just thrown in products because it is a known irritant the second reason and the larger reason I don't like to see it is because it operates at a very different pH than hyaluronic acid something like between six and seven is typical for a hyaluronic serum the problem with that is citric acid is very acidic and it operates at a much lower pH the whole solution of this is not optimal for the citric acid meaning that it's not going to be that effective it's sort of like combating all of these more basic ingredients around it and it's not really going to do that much so I'm not really clear why it was included so I'm going to consider this kind of a filler ingredient I don't see that it's going to be that effective and it definitely can irritate your skin so I don't love the ingredients list of this particular ordinary hyaluronic serum. The Dr. Barbara Sturm is totally different. I love this ingredients list. It's short, it's concise. Every single ingredient that you see here is concentrated, it's active, it's effective, and it's included for a particular reason. There's no fillers, there's no craps. It's gonna be much more gentle for people that have dry or sensitive skin because it has fewer ingredients in it. And even though this product actually has a lower concentration of hyaluronic acid in it, I actually prefer that in a serum because I have really dry Dry skin. So the difference between hyaluronic acids and other humectants is that hyaluronic acid is insanely active. It's really, really intense. It can absorb up to 1,000 times its weight in water. This means that if you live in a really humid environment and if you have a combination through to oily skin, this is fantastic. But if you have a dry skin like me and you live in a dry climate, going with a more gentle approach, I'm actually going to get better results. So I do actually think for my skin type and my climate, the doctor Barbasturum is actually a better product although that's a little bit counterintuitive that's how I feel if you have a super oily skin you may not agree with that you may like the more active ingredients as I said at the beginning of the video not all hyaluronic acids are the same and unfortunately based on the name that you see in the ingredients list you cannot compare them side by side even though the ordinary states on this website that it uses three different molecular sizes it doesn't indicate what those sizes are I believe the implication is there's like a large, a medium, and a small size, but it doesn't really actually verify that. Although the Dr. Barbara Sturm Hyaluronic Serum includes both long and short chain hyaluronic molecules, it actually doesn't indicate the actual molecular size either. This one does contain molecules of the appropriate size to hydrate deeply, whereas the ordinary serum, we actually just don't know. And therein lies exactly the difficulty of comparing hyaluronic acid side by side. Not only these two products, but I have a whole bunch of other hyaluronic acids and they have the same difficulty. There isn't really any requirement by a regulatory body to talk about how the products are refined or the sizes of the product or the concentration of the product. So it's really difficult to do an actual side-by-side -side factual comparison. So the only way that you can really test these products and know if they're right for you is to actually try them yourself. So that leads me into my experience with these products. So I've already sort of spoiled it that I didn't love the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid. That said, I do want to try their other product because it does seem to be more suitable for my skin type and my skin needs. I definitely would want to check that one out. I didn't have any problems with this product at all. I actually really like the Ordinary. I think they are pretty good quality products at a very affordable price. However, the texture of this, the absorption of this, the efficacy of this, it didn't really suit me. In particular, I noticed it left kind of like stickiness or film on my face which actually a lot of hyaluronic serums do and that seems to be most people's complaint with this particular product it does seem like they addressed it with their updated hyaluronic serum so I'd like to check that one out I just haven't been able to yet now I have a small confession to make about the Dr. Barbara serum this is 
is actually the anti-pollution drops. This is the full size of the product. I actually have the hyaluronic serum only in a 10 mil size. Now these are available to buy individually on Netaporte. I think it's exclusive to Netaporte. Otherwise you have to buy these 10 mil ones in a kit or actually get the 30 mil, which is very cost prohibitive. This one is still really expensive, but if you want to try it out, it's a great way to try the product before committing to the full size. I only wanted to use this one because I thought it would be weird to compare the little one. But the price that I stated at the beginning was for the 30 mil. So that's just why I've been using this one throughout the video to this point. Now I'm going to switch to the real hyaluronic serum. And by the way, if you're interested in anti-pollution products and you want to know how they work and if this one's any good, I will leave that video linked up in the cards for you because I've already reviewed it. And I think this is actually a really fantastic and interesting product. So why don't you go and check that out if you haven't already. Now let's talk about the actual Dr. Barbara Sturm Hyaluronic Serum. This one is without a doubt the best hyaluronic serum I have ever used and I did not want to like this product. I'm just gonna say it up front. I cannot afford to spend this much money, 259 euros on a hyaluronic acid serum. It's just not within my budget. So I didn't wanna like this one. I kinda wanted to believe that the cheaper ones were gonna be comparable, that they were gonna be just as good so I could save my money. And even if it wasn't the ordinary, I mean, there's a lot of products that are at a different price point between six and a half euros and 259. I was hoping there was gonna be one somewhere in the middle that I liked as much as this one, but that isn't the case. This one really is, the best product that I have tried for a hyaluronic acid serum and it's also the best product I have tried from Dr. Barbara Sturm. So if you're a fan of this brand you should definitely check out this product. If you have it within your budget to spend so much on a serum I do believe this one is worth it. If you use it properly it's suitable for all skin types. What it comes down to for me are two things. The first one is the texture. So most hyaluronic acid serums they're just kind of sticky and they take some time to absorb. This one is instantaneous. You just apply it to your skin and it just absorbs right in. There's no stickiness, there's no residue. You can continue with your skincare routine literally 30 seconds. I believe the website actually claims you can start your other skincare routine items 30 seconds after the serum. For something like The Ordinary, I would wait a couple of minutes to let it really sink in before you start your other products. This is probably one of the one that I would recommend the most for most skin types. It is not overhyped, it is so good. On top of absorbing it really well, it just works really, really well. It does really moisturize your skin. I notice big differences when I use it. I'm very sparing with my tiny little bottle. I have hardly any left. I kind of use a few drops at a time because I know that when I run out of it, I can't really justify the price of the new one because it is a very expensive product. From my experience and my opinion, I do believe it has a better ingredients list than the cheaper products. But the final diagnosis is, is it worth it? It depends totally on your budget. If you have the budget to spend on skincare, this is one of the products you should invest in. If you do not, get The Ordinary. This is a good hyaluronic acid serum, especially for the price. The price is unbeatable, it's insane. This product is still pretty good. It's just not as great as the more expensive ones, but it's also a lot more cost effective. And in particular, if you have a more combo or oily skin type, I think this is actually gonna be really great for you. If you have a more mature or more dry skin, try their other formula. That is my breakdown of these two products. I really hope that it was useful to you. I absolutely love doing a deep dive into different product types or ingredients so if there's anything you want to learn more about please leave it in the comments down below and I can make a video on it for you. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my next one.